Now let's do some actual predictions on, based on the values that we have. And this is model building, if you will. This is really the crux of building a model and building predictive values. Now I'm going to be using the values that are in the sample data, but I don't have to. But I'm doing it just to show uh, where these results come from and also to show that um, there's a residual term. So for the first person who had uh, a, le a stress level of 10, we can use the regression equation to predict how many colds they would have. So we've got the intercept, and I've got the formula up here. Negative 0.226 is the intercept, plus the slope, which is 0 0.105, and then we multiply that by x. And in this person's case, x is equal to 10. So what do we get? We get a predicted value of 0.824. So the regression equation is slightly uh, mispredicting the number of colds, because the actual person in this case actually had zero colds. So that's the error term. That's the error portion in the regression equation. It acknowledges there's some error, and it's equal in this case to negative 0.824, because the difference between the number of colds the person experienced and what we predicted based on the regression equation is equal to this. Now let's check another example, or two examples. In this case, uh, where the person had stress of 28, we build the regression equation the same way we did in the first case. We use the intercept, our foundation, plus the slope, multiplied by x for that case, which is 28, which gives us a value, a predicted y value, i.e. colds, 2.7 colds for this person. They really actually experience 3, and so the residual 3 minus 2.714 equals 0.286. Nearly, uh, it was nearly perfect uh, prediction, but not quite. And then the same person for 5, with an x value of 48, with their stress levels, we predict, based on the regression equation, that they would have uh, 4.814 calls, when in reality they had 5, and we get a residual term of 0.816, because the difference between 5 and 4.484. What's important here is that we're, with the regression equation, we can predict how many colds somebody's going to experience. Now, in this case, uh, the, the actual prediction values are impossible. Somebody can't experience 4.8. But we could round up uh, in every case and say, if we were to apply this in, in reality, we could round up in each case, or round down as, we, as uh, required, and we could still predict, we would predict 5 in this case. <clears throat> now when you do it for everybody, and I've done it quickly here, and I'm not going to go through every one, but I'm just going to point out that for the regression equation, the foundation, the intercept stays the same, and then the slope stays the same for everybody. And then we multiply it by different values of x, because everyone has a different level of stress, although these two people have the same stress level. And then we calculate their predicted number of colds. And then we calculate the difference between observed and, and uh, predicted. And then we get all the error terms. And I've pushed that over here purposely, because it, to, to demonstrate that the error term isn't part of the prediction. It's just part of the regression model. It's secondary. But it's still important. You want to look at uh, errors in particular when you want to test some assumptions. But I'm not going to go into detail with that. Uh, something I'll point out is this residual term, this uh, person here who had three colds, but a stress level of, I can tell you, 14. This person actually scored 14 on stress and had a residual of three. Well, that's the biggest distance between the regression line, isn't it? It looks like it, and it also corresponds to the biggest residual term over here. This person had a stress score of 14 and uh, actual colds of 3, but predicted colds of 1.2, which gave a residual of 1.76. And that's what this person, that's what this means here. That distance between this value and the regression line is the residual. So everything that is away from the line is a residual. This would have a very, very small residual but these have bigger residuals. Now we can't, we wouldn't calculate again residuals based on with a ruler to measure the distance. We do it analytically with a regression line. 
Now something I want to point out about point out about linear regression when you're actually doing the calculations, you kind of might lose focus in that we 